What's up guys, Jace 2 cents here coming at you with another video about graphics cards. They're the single most important component when it comes to your gaming experience. They're the hottest thing in your system. They are the most expensive thing in your system. But now we're gonna talk about a different type of cost. We're gonna talk about the cost to FPS and anti-aliasing and exactly how much performance do you really lose by cranking up those settings. With its dual BIOS, 10 plus 2 power phase delivery, RGB ACX 3.0 cooler, and factory overclock, the EVGA GTX 1070 and 1080 for the win are excellent choices for gamers who demand the best. Learn more by following the link down below. Now on a high level here, because I don't want to spend too much time making this video 45 minutes long, or an aka a Barnacles video. <laughs> Love you, Jerry. But anti-aliasing is nothing more than a processing method in real time that makes your images look a lot less jaggy as you're gaming. But unfortunately, because it's a process that takes place in real time, depending on the type of AA you use and the level of AA you use can have a huge impact on your gaming. Now, all anti-aliasing really does is fake resolution, if you will, if that makes sense, because your screen is made up of a ton of square pixels. And the higher the resolution, the more square pixels you have. But the problem is the lower the resolution, the more significant and severe the jaggies are going to appear. 720p gaming, 1080p gaming, and even 1440p gaming can still have quite a bit of jaggies. So that's where anti-aliasing comes in. It sort of fakes the softness of those edges and processes the image in real time to make it look more rounded and smooth. Therefore, less jarring of a gaming experience when you're just looking at all of these different squares trying to make something look round. Over the years though, there have been tons of different types of anti-aliasing. So we're gonna talk about three today. We're gonna talk about, because it's a pretty wide spectrum of impact and there's some proprietary anti-aliasing and there's some open source anti-aliasing. So we're really just gonna talk about three different types today that kind of occupy a pretty wide spectrum here. The first type being, well, of course, no AA. So that's our baseline. How much of a performance here we're gonna take if we have none turned on whatsoever. But we're also gonna take a look at SSAA, which is a super sampling anti-aliasing. It's an older technology. and It's got a little bit more of a performance hit. We're also gonna look at FSAA, which is a fast approximation anti-aliasing. And then we're also gonna take a look at SMAA, which is a much newer type found uh, that has a lot less performance hit and actually applies it to the entire screen. Some anti-aliasing types only apply it to the edges or the extreme edges of a particular rendered item on the screen, which could make the edges look smooth, but things happening inside of that particular polygon rendered image would look jaggy still. So the two benchmarks we are gonna use in this video because of their age difference and the different types of anti-aliasing available in there is the original Tomb Raider benchmark, and we're gonna take a look at the rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Now the Tomb Raider benchmark uses SSAA or super sampling and FXAA. And then the Rise of the Tomb Raider uses SMAA. So we wanna see how much of a performance hit we really get as we step up those particular settings. So without further ado, let's look at the results. Obviously from those benchmarks, it is very taxing on your graphics card to start bumping up the anti-aliasing settings. Remember, it, it's gotta go through and process all of those images in real time. So the more time it has to spend processing, the less time it can send that image to your graphics or your monitor. So that's why you see such a huge hit to performance. Now I think some of you might have been scratching your head on why he used a Fury Nano. Uh, a couple reasons actually. One, I wanted the fast HBM on there. I wanted to see the like real tangible benefits in DX12 uh, on the Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark. And two, it's got four gigabytes of VRAM, which I think is much more relatable to a lot of the viewers, especially with those on lesser end GPUs uh, without running you know, six, eight, 12 gigabytes or massive amounts of VRAM. So I thought that this was a pretty good representation of what would be kind of midline on the level of GPUs that are out there so that we could test the true impact on the FPS when the core is having to handle all of that additional load without the VRAM being able to store nearly as much images in there when it comes to you know having a huge buffer of VRAM. So in conclusion, if you guys are playing your favorite AAA titles and you're just not getting the level of performance that you think you should be, consider lowering the levels of anti-aliasing or even the type of anti-aliasing. 
it's definitely a trade-off with how much jaggies you're willing to put up with versus the level of performance hit you're willing to take. There's always going to be a trade-off. You can make a prettier image, but it's going to come at the cost of FPS, thermals, and likely noise as your fans have to really ramp up to handle all of that extra load being put on your GPU. The GPU load, it grows exponentially with the levels of anti-aliasing. It is just asking a lot of your graphics card. So there you go guys, a quick video here showing you some of the impacts. Obviously there are tons of titles out there with tons of different types of anti-aliasing and the results are definitely going to vary. So this is where you guys come in. You can run these same tests on your games. If you've got a game with a built-in benchmark, run it with different settings on the anti-aliasing and then put your results down in the comments. It, I could try and do that myself, but there are so many of you out there, it would be a huge pool of data if you guys are willing to run those tests. So if you decide to do it, down in the comments, list the title, the resolution, the type of AA, and the level of AA, the 2X, 4X, whatever, and then put your respective FPS on there. But keep all of the settings identical and only change the AA settings. And I think together we could really get a good idea of how much impact there really is if all of you guys kind of play along and participate. As always guys, thanks for watching today's video. It is so much fun being able to play around with all this different stuff and share information with you. So that's why I need you guys to tell me what do you want me to do when it comes to some of these different tests and reviews and project types. Let me know what you guys want to see on the channel moving forward. Also, welcome back to school, guys. Get your homework done before watching my videos, but make sure you watch them on your recess break or lunch break or whatever. I know you guys all bring your phones to school. It's no excuse that you shouldn't be watching Jay's Two Cents during school time. That's called multitasking, or as I like to call multitasking, AA or MTAA. Watch Jay's video while doing homework in class. All right, guys, as always, see you in the next video.